Okay, ready? Ready. Okay. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Alex. And I identify, you know, in a happy place between bisexual and gay. Hmm? And my happy place is being the gayest person I know. <laughs> and we're uh, reviewing LGBT yeah. films because we have nothing else to do. <laughs> no, literally nothing else on today. So just yeah. thought a bit of time. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So number five on my list is Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia was Tom Hanks playing a gay man with HIV and he was hiding it from his colleagues and then he teamed up with Denzel Washington to sue someone? I, I have, I mean, I put my hands up, I haven't seen Philadelphia, the reason, so. so... The reason I think this is important is because it was really groundbreaking at the time. It was, I mean, it, it also started the history of straight men playing gay roles and straight women playing gay roles. But it was, um, you know, it was kind of reflecting on the AIDS crisis of the 1980s and it was a really important film um, at the time. So I, I mean, you've not seen it. Yeah, I've not seen it. <laughs> so next. So five on my list is Carol. Um, Carol, have you seen Carol? Is it Kate Blanchett? Yeah. Yeah, I love her. It's like the most seductive film I think I've ever seen. They don't say a lot, but they're kind of saying a lot. Like there's a lot of tension there. And so it's, it's basically so... a half an hour of foreplay. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Right. <laughs> and Kate Blanchett is how I feel in my head. I am when I'm sexy, but in real life I'm just not. Yeah. Weirdly. Yeah, your inner Kate Blanchett, yeah. right? She's kind of a bit butch, she's kind of a bit femme, like I'm into her. I'm into it. Call us Kate Blanchett. Yeah, big time. <laughs> um, I've actually met Kate Blanchett for Have you actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all met each other in Australia. Oh my <laughs> God, Australians. Um, okay, so my number four is Love, Simon. It was kind of about being gay, but it wasn't tragic. And I find and like a lot of a lot of gay films end with this horrible kind of tragic. Yes. Oh my god, they both die and it's yeah. awful. And, yeah. and we're all kind of used <laughs> to a bit of tragedy in our lives. Where as queer people, we grow up with a lot of trauma. But um, what I liked about Love Simon was it was essentially kind of like a rom com. It was like a coming of age sort of rom com type film. Yeah. But it was so lovely. It was good. And also, didn't you think that there was like a group of friends, they were all mates, and they all got in the car together to go to school, and I was like, I didn't have friends like that. <laughs> and they were all like kind of queer adjacent and like fun and from all different walks of life, and I just, I was a bit jealous. No, but you do have that. friends now. Yeah, we do, yeah. Yeah, okay, um, so my number four is Pride, and it's a true story. This actually happened, um, and I love this film for its one-liners. The uh, the line about, yeah, I'm just off to Swansea for a massive les <laughs> Fantastic. I love that it's a true story. I love the sense of humor. I love that it's British, mm. and British film is incredible, so, that's why it's in my top list. Okay, so number three on my list is Moonlight. I didn't come out of the film being like, that was the most incredible film that I've ever seen, but I came out of the film being thankful and grateful for the fact that we are finally allowing stories like this to be told. And so it was deeply affecting for me to, to, to sit in a cinema and watch something which I actually relate to on every level. Mm. I just thought it was such a striking, first of all, every single person in that film is stunningly attractive. Mm -hmm. Men, women, everything in between. It was like, yeah. everyone was beautiful. Like mm -hmm. that's enough for me, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the actual story, um, and I, I guess like the, re like the realness, I mean like spoiler alert around the ending, but it's, you know, there's it's not resolved. Yeah. Also the cinematography in that film oh. is, Delicious. So everything looks beautiful. The people look beautiful. It, it just sort of works well off each other. So, okay. My number three is the kids are all right. And this film, I think for me, I really love it because it tells a story that we don't often hear about. It's a couple that have been together for 10, 15 years. Um, they decided that they wanted to use a sperm donor to have children, and those kids have grown up and they want to know who their biological father is. So I've never heard that story in cinema before. I think what I really like about this film is that there's quite a few recognizable faces in it. So it's sort of bringing it into the mainstream just a little bit more, but if it was my preference, there would be gay actors involved, but I guess one step at a time, so yeah. Also I feel like marriage is such a new thing for our community and to see marriage played out on screen is really affecting for me because I'm like, mm. oh, you know, these are the things that I thought that I couldn't have when I was growing up. It's a great yeah. film, one. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay.
Uh, your turn, yeah, right, two. So my number two is a film, but it's a documentary film, and it's Paris is Burning. Number one, it sheds light on a subculture that not many people knew about at the time and continue to not know about. It feels in some ways as well, I mean, Pose that now exists is, is kind yeah. of a, a throwback and obviously massively influenced by Paris is Burning. So we have a lot to thank for Paris is Burning. We have Ripple Drag yes. and we have Pose. Mm. Rachel takes me when she's sorry, she's like, I've just seen Paris is Burning in the schedule. I, I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> But it was really good. It's such a good <laughs> film. Okay, so number two on my list is a film called Weekend. Now, again, this is a British film, but it's quite low budget. And it's set in Manchester, and it's about these two guys meeting over the weekend. And, okay, well, maybe spoiler alert, but one guy who really wants the relationship, and one guy who's kind of like, no. Relatable, on both accounts. Yes, yeah. it's just, to me, a perfect love story. Yeah, it's a really, really striking film. Okay. My number one is, and this might be a controversial decision, Call Me By Your Name. You know sometimes you start crying in a film, even before it gets sad because you know it's going to get yeah. sad? We left the cinema and we all stood there talking and I was like full on <laughs> sobbing, like actually audibly and, and visibly sobbing and all my friends were like, is he? <laughs> I could just okay? imagine like everyone trying to have a conversation and you're there. <laughs> <It> <laughs> But I really liked the kind of innocence of a first encounter, um, and it really mirrored my first encounters. Right? It was, it was kind of there was something innocent, there was something really beautiful and romantic about it. Okay. So my number one film. <laughs> um, <laughs> My number one film is Milk. The time which it encapsulates that sort of real progression when it started to really like pick up momentum and people were actually standing up for things and standing up for what they believe in and just really came along at the right time for me and I think that's why I'm so emotionally connected to this film. Mm -hmm. So I would put that at my number one spot quite happily. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. Yeah, and if you disliked it, just, just go. Just see yeah, you later. If you didn't, yeah. Right. Yeah. Comment nice things no. about how lovely we are, please. Yeah, thank you.